franchise before if you exclude James Bond. Oh, that's true. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> which is only the most successful franchise <laughs> in the I do history see that. of oh, cinema. Nice. So, aside from that... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's basically British, though, so that doesn't count. Yeah, it's just a whole no, no, other world. No. Uh, I think tale. MGM would have something to, to say about whether or not it's in fact British, but... Um, uh, I think the character initially spoke to me through um, our um, our incredible director Francis Lawrence when he called me up and said, "Jeffrey, would you like to be a part of this?" And uh, I said, um, "Let me think about it for a minute." Yes, um, he. Uh, you know, I think what um, you know, and I have to say, actually, honestly, if I'm if, if you know if I'm to be frank, that. I wasn't as aware of you know uh, the phenomenon as I probably might have been might 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 have uh, been. I you know I hadn't read the books um, and I hadn't seen the movie. I see far fewer movies than I should. Uh, but upon delving into the material, um, I was really kind of um, kind of floored by you know by what I was reading uh, because. Yeah, you know, it's you know these are these are you know these are big epic movies, but they're grounded in some uh, some pretty um, pretty relevant and very interesting literature, um, and I guess particularly you know in that it's it's directed toward younger audiences. I kind of uh, leaped at the opportunity, pushed by my children, um, <laughs> to be a part of a of a movie that you know was a departure for me in that. You know, um, it appealed to to younger audiences. Although I think, as well, uh, this uh, these movies and these stories appeal to a wider, older parental audience as well. But um, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Cool. Thank you. Um, my question kind of goes off of that. I wondered how familiar any of you were with either the movie or the books before you started filming, or did you kind of try to stay out of that to follow the director? Start well. well. I think, um, you know, Francis, I mean, the we remain so tr pretty truthful. Uh, it was very truthful adaptation, so I feel it would be really crazy if we hadn't read the novels because they're so, um, there's so much beautiful information and Suzanne took so much time really fleshing out these characters over three pieces. Um, I think what was exciting about coming in is that, you know, not only do you get to come in and sort of create a, a character within, you know, a short uh, one film, but that we all have these sort of arcs, you know, and we're all kind of, we don't have to play all of our cards in the first film, which is kind of um, exciting and the way that she sort of laid it out was beautiful. But um, I was a fan of the film and I, I read the novels uh, when I was aware of the um, auditions. My little sister was a giant fan and she had tried to get me to read them prior and I always was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was like, oh, uh -huh, oh, I see, I see. I literally read them in 48 hours in bed with a lot of ice cream and I was <laughs> crying a lot. <laughs> uh, you know, I saw the first movie in theaters and then I instantly dove into the books and I think I read them in a matter of a week. It was, it was, a page turner. I couldn't put it down and I fell in love. And I remember reading Cashmere's part very specifically, but <laughs> little did I know at the time. <laughs> uh, I had seen the first film with my wife uh, mainly because, you know, a lot of people were talking about it. <laughs> and if I'm honest, um, 
Uh, but I, I had no idea it was it was based on a trilogy of novels. Uh, like I, I went in with my you know with no expectations basically, and was kind of overwhelmed and awestruck by you know the performances were phenomenal. Um, the concept and the story was very interesting and new um, to me. I mean, I know there's you know similarities to other films people keep bridging but um no i mean it was it was very very new and it was really really attractive as a project when like the audition came through um i had no idea like i say there was books um and i knew you know nothing but the fact my my character's name going into that first audition um and i didn't know any what that was i remember putting it into google and finding a lot of information <laughs> um, but kind of went in blind basically and i had to sit down with francis you know initially and he kind of discussed a little bit about what the character was and I had a very very uh, specific opinion or immediately without having reading you know without having read the books about what the character was but then when I kind of dove into the books eventually um, before we start filming that there was definitely an eye-opening experience for me um, you know obviously Finnick goes on such a great journey along with a lot of the other characters and I think yeah there was a lot more than meets the eye and I think that was what really attracted me personally. Did I not answer that? You did. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go further, though. I'll go further, yeah. though. Um, uh, you know, it, it, when you have, like, you know, this kind of... <laughs> Or well, when you have like what's really an, an encyclopedia mm -hmm. of you know uh, uh, you know encyclopedic background of your character, uh, and when you have you know such uh, you know detailed uh, uh, you know illustration of the entire cosmology of the story that you are you know trying to play some part in telling, you really would be like acting with you know with one eye asleep if you didn't you know go through and delve in as much as you possibly could to you know the, the the you know to the details provided in the in the book so i mean it was just like you know a no uh, brainer to 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 dig in there and, and get after that stuff you know to find as much uh, you know help as you can i look for any crutch that i possibly can find when i'm trying to create these things so you know it was, it was necessary for me yeah i think i mean as an actor you know screenplays are generally you know picture books, you know, with a little dialogue to help tell the story. So you're creating a lot of that subtext. But when you've got such phenomenal source material, I mean, of course, I think, you know, uh, any smart actor is going to look to that and, and take what they can. And I think there's a lot of good stuff there. I was a fan of the books before it was ever a, a film. Um, so for me, I would have played like a wig in the Capitol. <laughs> I just wanted to be a part of this in some way. I was a huge fan. So... Um, yeah, I, I thought it was really cool to have some opportunity to bring somebody to life. No questions for Sam. Um, what was your reaction to the Hunger Games fans when they found out that you were playing Finnick? You're now, you're going to be everywhere now. So what's your reaction to how we all reacted? My initial reaction was I didn't like them very much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of, you know, the, you know, backlash that uh, I'd been cast, partly because, you know, I wasn't six foot tall, blonde, tanned, and ripped like a god. Um, <laughs> but you know, there there was you were a. Where were we filmed? Yeah, I mean, luck, luckily I had a few months to prepare. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, of, of course, you know, people read a book and they have an image in their head, and you know, when you get cast this fat English pale kid. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there is, you know, the, the, a lot of people can't see above and beyond what is already laid out in front of them, um, and it, f you know, it kind of. I have to admit, it, you know, it spurred me on to work harder and, and to kind of prove people wrong. Um, you know, I, I can only work as hard as I can, and I definitely pushed myself beyond my limits. You know, and uh, I, you know, I hope I've done injustice, and I hope people won't be disappointed um, you know it's it's hard to say until until people see a bit more than me topless giving someone a sugar cube you know it's <laughs> it's, it's going to be tough but um, I'm, I'm sort of anxious and excited to share it I think I remember you know people were hanging Daniel Craig in effigy when he was cast as Bond uh, James you know, Bond that yeah that is. So fans know a lot but they don't necessarily know <laughs> I can say from being a female, he won't disappoint. <laughs> but there's also that, that thing that, you know, obviously the support, as sort of picture after picture has been kind of thrown out there, I mean, more and more people are kind of changing their opinions, which is nice. And, you know, 
has always been a, a, a very supportive network and what what it has proved is that there is such a passion behind this this you know group of fans and to be a part of that and you know like i say i hope i don't disappoint thank you there seems to be a lot of new characters a lot of new things what can we expect from this second one that we didn't get from the first one again well, wherever the first film left you, I mean, I feel like whatever you felt was safe and whatever you thought that you sort of figured out, you're like, okay, now this is going to happen and these people are going to be okay. I mean, the whole thing is turned on its head. So, I mean, everything that you thought was up, it's going to be down. I mean, every, I, literally on every level, it's just a complete, uh, you know, just a 180, uh, you know, 360 turn. So I feel like that you, that you can expect to just... Be completely your mind just be blown, you know. <laughs> blown mind. Expect a blown mind. mind. Sorry, I was like, I can cuss, and what are we else gonna? I know. Right? Like, there's so many things. There's so many like um, emphasis words that I want to use, but I'm fine. I mean, and what we have to remember this time around is, you know, all, all the all the tributes going into the arena are all trained killers. They've all won, mm -hmm. you know, their individual Hunger Games prior to, the, you know, the beginning of this film. And so they're all, I suppose, tortured souls and they've had to learn to adapt to survive uh, up until this point. And what's interesting is having all these characters collide, you know, um, there's only one winner, as they say. <laughs> and may the odds be ever in your favor. <laughs> How many more taglines can I throw? But I, I think that, um, uh, you know, one of the tools that's used to expand the experience is IMAX. Mm. And, uh, you know, as we emerge uh, into the uh, arena, uh, the aspect ratio of the filmmaking changes. So, uh, you know, we, we enter this much more vivid, much more... Um, uh, you know, highly, uh, you, know, you know, world of much higher resolution. And I think that really is kind of reflective of what happens in the story. The first story, The Hunger Games, is a very intimate, intimate story, much more, much more intimate. It's kind of the creating of this world, but then, you know, the, there's more fun as the world is dismantled, as the world explodes. And, and that's what, uh, you know, what, uh, what happens in Catching Fire. And I think it's also reflected in the filmmaking. And Francis Lawrence has uh, done... Um, <laughs> A masterful job, I, I, I feel, um, in, in, in leading us through this thing. I mean, he's a, he's a really um, kind of extraordinary filmmaker and leader in that regard because he does it very quietly, very, um, you know, it's very, uh, very clear, but uh, very uh, unassuming. But um, I had no idea of the extent to which he had realized, the, you know, his, you know, the vision of this story oh until I saw it. I know. And uh, and as Jenna said, you know, the back of my head was, uh, you know, was uh, was flying off after I, you know, experienced it. So I'm so excited. I've never been more excited uh, for fans to take in the experience that I, that I had watching well, you know, watching I mean, watching a movie as I had with this. I think. Uh, you know, they are voracious, and I think their voracious appetite will be satisfied by this, and more. Um, I, have a, I have a question from some kids in uh, Monroe Middle School in Huntsville, Alabama. Awesome. It says, the world of the Hunger Games is a really scary setting. How did you mentally prepare and motivate yourself to play a character in this world? Well, um, you know, we, the, the arena is set in Hawaii. Um, so that kind of tempered the fear factor, uh, for me anyway. But, you know, I, you, you know, I think, my, for me, the, you, know, I'm, you know, BT is more lover than fighter, you know. Um, everyone else is kind of a bit more brutal uh, in their tactics. So, you know, I just kind of sat back and watched everyone else prepare, and I kind of read, you know, well... You at least metaphorically read, you know, books on Tesla and Thomas Edison and things like that. Um, so that wasn't quite so fearful for me. Well, Francis was such a beautiful component for the actors. I mean, allowing us to have not only like access to Suzanne with any questions that we had about anything that had to do with backstory of our characters, but also that, you know, uh, when you basically are fighting for your life in a game of survival, there are some things that you will walk away from that are long lasting, <laughs> that are kind of quite damaging. Um, you know, post traumatic stress disorder is one of them. And I feel like um, Francis was very keyed into that and had a few people sit down with a um, post traumatic stress disorder sort of specialist to be able to really ask specific questions because I know that I had only read about it in novels and seen some things on book, but it was really nice to 
really get in there and key into um, you know different flashbacks and the way you hold your body and where memories are stored and all of that was such a um, uh, for me, really, really like eye-opening experience as an actor because it does really key into a lot of the stuff that we do naturally, anyways. <laughs> like store certain ideas or use sounds as as emotional awakenings, and um, and so for me that was a really nice place to kind of keep going back to, regardless of our tropical paradise that we are living in. <laughs> is kind of living within um, certain you know sounds and ideas of um, just complete terror and knowing how to sort of keep that in your body without completely wearing you out. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Um, they wanted to know how you mentally prepared and motivated yourself to play the character. I, you know, Kashmir's a character, um, and it's noted in the book, she's very prideful and arrogant and confident, um, and that's so unlike who I really am. So going into it, um, you know, I, I did a little bit of research, and, um, you know, I tried to pull up what I could and create as much of a backstory as I could, but... Um, you know, she was just somebody that I really had to tap into and just almost become a mean person, but it almost became a science and I knew when to switch it on and, and when to, to obviously switch it off. <laughs> Alan would remind me to switch it off a couple times. So, <laughs> uh, no, it, you know, it, it came down to a science and it was able to flip it on and off to a certain degree at that point. But, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a person who walks around and likes to give free hugs. So playing a character who is uh, just vile and, and expressed so much emotion just in her glances, it was, it was a little bit of a challenge in the beginning. All right, guys, we're out of time. So I want to say thank you to Jenna, Stephanie, Sam, Jeffrey, and Alan for your time. Thank you guys for